January 8th, 9.46am, District Court, Defendant Lobby, Number 1. Good morning, Mr. Wright. Good morning, Maggie. So, what do you think is going to happen today, sir? Yesterday's session didn't go so well and ended on a giant mystery. That's true. And we still haven't solved a single part of it yet. You say that, but I kind of have. Are you okay, Nick? Huh? Oh, uh, yeah, of course. I saw that, that little flash of doubt in your eyes. N no that wasn't doubt, that was, um, determination. You're filled with determination. Why don't I believe you? It's nearly time, Maggie. You better get going to defendant's seat. Roger, don't let me down, Mr. Wright. I'm counting on you. Hey, pal. Hey, Detective Gumshoe. Quit stressing Maggie out. She doesn't need that. But how do you know she was stressed? I was watching through the doorway. Oh. Hang on, I'm going to turn down my volume just a little bit. Boop, 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 boop. So that I can hear what I'm doing. <laughs> you look like you lost the case already. Show a bit of confidence, will you, pal? Here, maybe this will help. Huh? Have you taken up aromatherapy too? Not in a million years, pal. Don't tell me you don't remember this thing. Hmm, come to think of it, that doesn't look like one of those aromatherapy bottles. This is the small bottle that turned up in Trey Beyond's kitchen a couple of days ago. Wow, look at all these little bottles. Oh, the aromatherapy oils. He's got so many, they're overflowing onto the floor. Hey, wait a minute. There's one bottle that's different from all the others. Well, what do you know? And it doesn't have a label either. And it doesn't smell. We finally got the analysis results back from the lab. So, what is it? Is it the poison? I'm afraid not, pal. It's medication. Medication? Yeah, for ears. Topical use only, apparently. For ears, you mean... Yeah, it's the medication Glenn Elg was using for his ruptured eardrum. What was Glenn Elg's ear medication doing in the kitchen? A small bottle refiled into the court record. Um, what about the unidentified fingerprints? Anything on that? Someone screwed up, so they only had time to analyse the contents of the bottle. Another hour and they might have gotten something on the prints, but... Hmm... That's gonna weaken its impact as a piece of evidence. Okay, pal, this is it. Make sure your defence is impregnable today, got it? Today's trial. I'm gonna expose that guy for what he's done, or my name isn't Phoenix Wright. That's kind of the most appropriate time to use that, you know, all my name isn't cliche, because, yeah, this, this guy's been impersonating him. I don't know. Anyway, let's get going. Um, by the way, I'm working next to an open window, so, you know, there might be, like, random voices coming up from the street or something. We'll see how we go. <laughs> uh, I just, it, you know, it's an unusual setting. I don't have... My normal setup at the moment. I'm still using these different headphones. They're comfier, but in order to hear my own voice, I have to, like, put it on my ear in a weird way. Yeah. Anyway, let's stop rambling and play the case. <laughs> January 8th, 10am, District Court. Courtroom number four. Court is now in session for the trial of Maggie Bird. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Ready and waiting as always, Your Honor. Very good. Then we'll get underway at once. Yesterday we heard the testimony of Mr. Victor Kudo. He claims to have witnessed the defendant putting a powder into the victim's coffee. However, the witness's testimony was plagued with a number of problems. The mark on the rim of the cup shows that the victim drank from it with his right hand. But according to the old man's testimony, he picked it up with his left hand. Thank you, Mr. Gotto. Furthermore, according to the witness's account, the victim was listening to the radio with an earpiece in his left ear. Yet, the victim's left eardrum was ruptured, which made him effectively deaf in that ear. It's amazing how many contradictions a single case can have, huh, Nick? Oh, 
Ha! Huh. Allow me to en enlighten you, Your Honor. The world, you see, keeps turning, and we must turn with it. You've lost me already, Mr. Gotto. Don't let the mysteries of yesterday mystify you today. Only losers think like that. You've got to change with the times. That's one of my rules. Are you implying that you've resolved these contradictions? You know the answers to these riddles? The old guy wasn't just throwing seed in here, he was throwing us off the scent. And today, I'll prove it. Very well, let the first witness take the stand. It's Mr. Armstrong, um... So, um, I believe there'll be some more annoying, like, gender shit, so, um, stay safe, folks. <laughs> Cause, yeah, this case is bad about that. And you are? Oh, bonjour, everyone. I am Jean Armstrong, the owner and head chef of the Tre Bian restaurant. Enchante! Forgive me for asking witness, but, oh my god. Yeah, it happened immediately. Oh. <laughs> Are you a woman? Oh la la, monsieur. As you can see, I am la perk and perky gentleman, non? I mean... Yeah. This is... <sighs> gross. <sighs> uh... Um... On the day of the incident, you were in Trebian's kitchen. Isn't that right? With you, monsieur. Everything feels right. Oh, I kind of ship it. <laughs> huh. Wow, he's totally unfazed. Doesn't anything intimidate this guy? I mean, it wasn't intimidation, it was flirting. Very well. Your t testimony, please, witness. Please tell me the tell the court what happened that day at Trey Beyond. We oui, volun volunteers, Vo volunteers. I don't know how to pronounce that. I don't know French words. <laughs> uh, witness testimony at Trebian. When it all happened, there were just two customers in my restaurant. I remember I was experimenting with some new art decos that day, like having a large mirror between la tables, for example. We oui, perhaps that is what la old man was looking at. The cup, the earpiece, and the glasses. He would have seen every everything in reverse, none. A m m mirror? We, oui, un grand mirror, la most enormous mirror. I don't know how good my French accent is. I'm working on it. <laughs> and suddenly, the mystery disappears. Like I said, the world keeps turning, so roll with it. Hmm. That would explain the coffee cup and the earpiece conundrum. The mirror would have made everything appear back to front. What the heck? It's way too early in the morning for this to be happening to me. Now then, Mr. Wright, you may begin your cross-examination. Okay, so... There's a really simple problem with this, right? Uh, we scroll forward to... See, he says, Le cup, le piece, and le glasses, he would have seen everything in reverse, non? Which is correct. The problem with that is that Victor's testimony before told us that the earpiece and the glasses were on the same side of his head. And if we look at our profile, we can see that that is the left side, which is the side with the ruptured eardrum. Therefore, the glasses should be on that side, and the eardrum, the, the um earpiece should be on the other side. Which means there wasn't a mirror. <laughs> I forget if we can just, like, present his profile right away, or... Let me just chuck down a save, just in case. <laughs> Music stop, we're good. The coffee cup, the earpiece, and the HMD. Let's think back over Mr. Kudo's testimony for a second, shall we? Boy was wearing the earpiece on the same side as the green lens of his specs. No question, you can lock me up if I'm wrong, it was his left ear without a doubt. So, to summarize, 
We were told both the HMD and the earpiece were on the victim's left side. Now, if Mr. Kudo saw all that as a reflection in a mirror, it means both the HMD and the earpiece were actually on the victim's right side. Exactement. You see, monsieur, now that you think about it, it is not so hard, non? Unfortunately, that's where we run into a monumental contradiction with the facts. If Mr. Kudo really did see everything in a mirror, why is it that the HMD is now on the wrong side of his head? Order, order. Mr. Wright is correct. If the witness genuinely observed the victim reflected in a mirror, they, we would expect the victim's eyepiece to have been over his right eye. And look at the way it's shaped, like, that would not work on both eyes, it's designed to go in that particular spot. I don't know if that comes up in the case, I've forgotten, <laughs> but yeah. How bitter. Trite, you should have a taste of this bitterness, it'll calm you down in no time. Uh, are we talking about your coffee, or something completely different? You understand the way the witness thinks. How he thinks? You remember this, I presume. The I broke the vase, sorry apology let I mean Mr. Kudo's sworn testimony? Exactly. The old man has one very grievous habit, other than throwing seeds. The more of an impression something makes, the more muddled his mind makes it. And what's the most striking thing about Mr. Elg? Clearly it's the victim's eyepiece. And that's my point. The old man strikes again. Mr. Elg's HMD made a big impression on the old man. I saw the earpiece and those newfangled spectacles he was wearing. Oh yes, they were both on his left ear. Do you hear? His left ear. Ha. Huh. Well, Trite? Ugh. That's the worst but best impression of Kudo ever. Wow, I really thought he was all seedy for a minute there. Goto's good. <laughs> Enough. I must agree that yesterday's witness was irresponsibly rash in much of his testimony. I think you kind of lose the impact of the whole doing an impression of the witness thing, considering that I am voicing all of the characters. But you get the idea. <laughs> Bad luck, Nick. Looks like the boil of a contradiction you found is just a rash. A mirror can't be beaten by a handful of seeds, nor can it lie. So, what exactly was the old man looking at? Fill us in, Mr. Armstrong. Go on, tell the court. We're all ears. Oui, I can explain. Please, if you will look at the plans of the restaurant. The mirror. Alors, is everyone sitting comfortably? I don't know what I'm doing with his voice. The mirror, it was in the middle of the restaurant, dividing the two arms. There is only one seat from which you could have seen an image of the victim. That was the seat at the table next to the victims. That was where the old man was sitting. After the terrible incident occurred, I moved the mirror so it was not in the way. But naturally, I did not touch anything else. Anything else? Hmm. Yeah, I, I'm not getting this accent thing right. <laughs> hmm. I see no problems with the explanation we have just heard. From the table next to the victims, Mr. Kudo could have seen the victim in the mirror. What a naughty little coquette I am, confusing all the men like this. Ugh. Ugh. Don't worry about it. We can keep up, except for the guy breaking out in a cold sweat over there again. Ugh, I hate that guy. You said you didn't touch anything else apart from the mirror. Are you quite sure about that? Volunteers, of course. Very well, Mr. Wright, your cross-examination, if you please. Okay, so the problem with this part is that we're changing where we think Mr. Kudo was sitting, right? So if we look at the photo of the crime scene, which I think is this, this one? No? No, we can look at the blueprint though. Uh, so... Where we thought he was sitting was across... I can't... I'd like a little pointer on the screen, but I haven't got one. <laughs> uh, you know, the one that's in the same, like, column. And he's looking across from there. Um... 
Uh, but yeah, if we look at this photograph of the scene, we can see the table at which they're claiming Mr. Kudo was sitting, which is the one in the foreground here. And that one looks perfectly normal. There's like nothing weird going on with that table, which is exactly what's so weird. Because we know that Mr. Kudo uh, has a piece of evidence here somewhere. There we are. He broke the vase at his seat, which is not... Which, which is not what you see if you look at the photograph. You can see an unbroken vase, which suggests he didn't sit there. Objection. <laughs> uh, I think... I think I need to just present the testimony... here? Objection! Yep. Your Honor, Mr. Kudo's words yesterday strongly contradict Mr. Armstrong's testimony. This is the letter of apology that was written by Mr. Kudo, is it not? I realise it looks useless, Your Honour, but this is still testimony. Huh. I guess useless people are only really good at identifying useless things. What relevance does this scrap of paper have to the trial, Mr. Wright? Mr. Kudo's testimony is actually very relevant to the question at hand, Your Honour. Because it very clearly contradicts with this piece of evidence. And that would be the photograph we were just looking at. This piece of evidence contradicts with the testimony we have heard, Your Honor. The crime photo? Yes, this photo clearly shows something that theoretically should not exist. What on earth do you mean by that, Mr. Wright? Should not exist? Huh. Sounds like you're describing yourself, Trite. <laughs> Now then, if the defense would please clarify its statement. What is the something that should not exist in this photo? It's the, it's the vase. I, I already explained this to you so you knew what was going on, but yeah. It's this. It's this vase. There is one thing that was clearly demonstrated by yesterday's testimony. Mr. Kudo broke the vase that was on the table where he was sitting. And yet, as the court can see, there is an unbroken vase on the table next to the victim. Why? Because Mr. Kudo was not, in fact, sitting at the table next to the victim at all. Objection. Don't be an idiot, Trite. That's impossible. That seat's the only one Kudo could have seen the victim's reflection from. Exactly. There is only one conclusion we can draw from this contradiction. There was no mirror in Trey Beyond that day. Your testimony, Mr. Armstrong, is an elaborate lie. Mon Dieu! <laughs> Don't try to confuse the court, Try. Obviously the witness cleaned up the vase, while the police were taking their time getting to the crime scene. Unfortunately, Mr. Goddo, that doesn't quite work for me. Mr. Armstrong already testified to the contrary, in his own words. I did not touch anything else except the mirror. Ugh. Ugh. I, I love to scream out while drinking coffee. It's my favorite favorite pastime. <laughs> well, witness, what do you have to say for yourself? <laughs> I was right. There was no mirror in the restaurant that day. In light of this re revelation, we return back to the original problem. Why did the victim have an earpiece in an ear which he couldn't hear? Huh. You only get one shot in life. There's no turning back. If you want to claim that the mirror wasn't there, Trite, then this problem is all yours. How do you explain what the old man saw? If I can answer this, then I'll be that much closer to the truth. I can feel it. Are you going to be okay? Can you really solve this contradiction, Nick? There's more than just this one contradiction, Maya. What do you mean? Remember what Maggie told us? There was another man at the victim's table. And there was a sample CD on the victim's table. It all flies in the face of Mr. Kudo's testimony. And I think I know the reason why nothing in this case is adding up. Well, Mr. Wright, let's hear your answer. Yes, Your Honor. The reason behind all the contradictions of Mr. Kudo's testimony is simple. The victim was a phony. 
This case is riddled with contradictions. Yet, there is one very simple answer that clears them all up. A and what is that? The incident Mr. Kudo witnessed and the incident the victim experienced were two completely different events. What? Yes, the victim that Mr. Kudo saw wasn't Mr. Glenn Elg at all. It was an imposter, a phony pretending to be Mr. Elg. Obviously, unlike the victim, there was nothing wrong with the imposter's left eardrum. That's how he ended up wearing the earpiece in his left ear by mistake. Order, order in the court. Settle down or I'll clear the courtroom. Quiet, Gramps. Why don't you clear out of here? Why don't you clear out of here, huh? What did you say? Trite. Are you saying that what Mr. Kudo saw was a setup? Yes. Someone pretended to be Glen Elg and acted out the whole coffee poisoning, all for the express purpose of creating a witness out of one Mr. Victor Kudo. Get real, Trite. Why would anyone want to do that? Oops. Isn't it obvious? The thing Mr. Kudo was most insistent about in his testimony was... The serving girl brought him a Java Chino, but she put something in it. That's the serving girl right there in the defendant's chair. I remember her well. But it's so hard to believe, but... There was one, and only one reason to show Mr. Kudo this fake poisoning. To show Maggie Bird in the act of poisoning the coffee. Are you insinuating that the waitress in the old man's story was a fake as well? It's true that there were no other customers in the restaurant at the time, but... It's also true that the chef was there. He would have noticed what was happening. That's right. Well, witness? If a restaurant really was the scene of such theatrics, you would have known about it, correct? Oh la la, this is most difficult for me. No. All you have to do is testify. You are under oath, after all. Was there, in fact, a phony at Trey Beyond that day? The defense demands that Mr. Armstrong tell the whole truth about what happened. The defense's request for additional testimony is accepted. You will accurately explain, in detail, the events in the restaurant that day. Ooh. Oui. In the restaurant. Yeah, we're getting to the crux of this case now. Le victim, Monsieur Elg, he came to my restaurant alone. I remember the old man arrived not long after him. There were no other customers. When he got word, he won the lottery. Mon... Mon... Mon Elg? Monsieur Elg? Mon Elg. <laughs> Became very excited. It was approximately five minutes later. That the poisoning incident occurred. None. There was no time for a phony to do the acting. Just so we're clear, there was no mirror in the restaurant after all? Je vous demande pardon, but give me your honour. I lied because I wanted this mess to be cleared up quickly. What you have just done is commit perjury, Mr. Armstrong. I will decide how to punish you later. We. Oui. For now, we will hear your cross-examination. Mr. Wright, if you please. Hmm. He took that perjury charge a bit too well. But I'm guessing he'll be in more serious trouble after this cross-examination. Okay, so the deal here... Um, we can scroll on through here. So we know the poisoning happened five minutes after winning the lottery. Uh, if we have a look at uh, 1.30 and 2.30pm... So we know the time of death was somewhere in that time slice. Uh, But, uh, if we can find... I think it's here. Here. Yeah, so the actual lottery happens at 1.30pm, which means the poisoning must have happened just after that, which means there's still quite a big chunk of time afterwards for another poisoning to happen. A fake poisoning. 
Uh, I think I just have to present the lottery thing here, but I might need to press a bit first. So let's just chuck down another quick save point there. Yeah, music's still going. Hang on. <laughs> just gonna, just gonna save scum on camera. <laughs> and what were you doing at that point? Without any customers, you must have had time to kill. I am a multi-talented woman. What are you doing? What are you doing with this character? <laughs> Is it Capcom? Capcom, what are you doing with this character? I'm unsure. Sorry? What do you mean? This area is the renowned chef, Jane Armstrong, and the tragic poet, Clarice Armstrong. C -c clarice Oui, I was writing a poem. An angry tale of a chef in half a million dollars of debt. Cooking for a man who won half a million dollars on the lottery. It is called Pourquoi? It means, why? Perhaps I could recite it for the court? Please don't. Okay, so that didn't help me at all. Uh, that made this man be uncomfortable. You mean you contacted the police as soon as the incident occurred? I asked the old man to call from the payphone. By your own argument, Trite. The purpose of this phony victim's performance was so the old man would see it. In other words, once the incident occurred, this opportunity would completely disappear. Indeed. Bien, it seems the shadow of doubt has been lifted, ne sais pas? I don't know if I pronounced that correctly. I guess Mr. Armstrong is connected to this case, huh? Absolutely. Someone was impersonating Mr. Elgar and I refused to believe he was oblivious. He was there the whole time, after all. But if you're right, wouldn't Maggie have noticed too? She fell unconscious when the incident occurred, remember? Ah, you mean that's when the phony staged his act? We'll know for sure once I find a hole in this testimony. Okay, so I must need to press something else? Was he alone at his table as well? Mace, we. I saw him from the kitchen. Yet the defendant, Miss Bird, remembers it differently. She swears there was another man at the victim's table. Huh. Unfortunately for you, try it. Yesterday's witness also testified that the victim was alone. You know, seeing you squirm like that reminds me of a certain coffee's bittersweet bite. What kind of coffee has he been drinking? It's not coffee, it's love. It's love that's bittersweet. Hearing Maya say that makes her seem wise all of a sudden. Cute. <laughs> By old man, you mean Victor Kudo, correct? Oui, he comes often for my special coffee. I drank your coffee once, Mr. Armstrong. It's special, I'll give you that. It's worth a sip, just for the experience. Oh, you make me so happy, Monsieur. You are most welcome any time. I said it was worth one sip, and nothing more. <laughs> so old Mr. Kudo arrived at the restaurant around the same time as the victim. Maybe I should ask about his arrival in more detail? Uh, what time was it? Out of curiosity, about what time was it when Mr. Kudo arrived? Oh. Oh no, I cannot remember, Monsieur. Hmm, I believe we were told by a witness yesterday. The crime was reported at 2.25pm by a kind of scary old man, sir. Does that perhaps jog your memory, witness? The incident happened about 20 minutes after he arrived. So the victim must have arrived between 2pm and 2.10pm, non? Hmm, just after 2, huh? Thank you for your help in jogging my memory, monsieur. You are wonderful. <laughs> I can't sit here all the time and do nothing now, can I? The time of day will be added to the witness's testimony. Okay, this is what we need to press on. We, Monsieur Judge, everything I do, I do it for you. Merci bien. Merci bien. That's French, isn't it? <laughs> I'm glad at least one person is in a good mood. He's even humming a song to himself. Maybe I should have done, like, a less awkward laugh. <laughs> like that, there we go. 
Uh, just after 2 p.m. Okay, we have some problems then. Uh, because the lottery is at 1.30. I think we can present the lottery uh, flyer now. Uh, but I'm not really sure. Hopefully this works. Yes, it does. I'm afraid I've finally got you, Mr. Armstrong. Qua? What do you mean? At the time in question, the victim was listening to the radio with his earpiece. The show he was listening to was Millionaire Radio. Each week, they announced the winning numbers of the half-million-dollar lottery ticket. Oui, that must be le show, mon chouette. Mon elg. I guess they couldn't fit mon sure, but, I mean, mon? <laughs> Is he pronouncing it as an abbreviation? I, I don't know. Mon sure elg, what's listening to? I can't see any problem with this testimony, Mr. Wright. I wonder. You say the victim arrived at your restaurant after 2pm, correct? Oui, oui. I am sure of it. I remember it perfectly now. I know it was that time because I had just finished serving the lunch menu. Get to the point, Trite, if you have one. That show is broadcast live at 1.30pm and it claims to be the most thrilling 10 minutes of your life. It's on the air at 1.30? Now, supposedly, the victim made some noise when it was announced that he had won. And yet, I don't believe his cry of joy could have occurred after 2pm. Because the show had already finished more than 30 minutes earlier by that point in time. Non! <laughs> this victim we've been told about has done nothing but the impossible. Listening to the radio with a ruptured eardrum? Catching a show that was already over? There is only one conclusion you can draw from these facts. This victim was an imposter acting out the poison 30 minutes after the real murder. Yes, there were two Glen Elgs in Trey Beyond that day. The real Glen Elg, now dead, having been poisoned by the real killer. And the phony Glen Elg, acting out the events for Mr. Kudo to witness. It certainly seems that way. I mean, if that wasn't the case, how could you explain the time discrepancy? Quite a performance, Trite. You were almost on a roll. But sadly, you lack the rock-hard foundation of rhythm to build your song. What is this? Music Theory 101? Let's recap. According to your imaginative theory, it's now just after 2pm. The phony Elg is performing a play for the benefit of Mr. Kudo. How do you explain, then, where the real Glen Elk is? Oops. I don't believe I have to spell this out for the court. However... <laughs> Sorry, hang on. At that time, the real Glen Elg was already dead. That's certainly the obvious conclusion. Objection. Thank you, Tri. That's exactly what I was hoping you would say. What? Now, I presume you can prove this theory of yours? Can you explain where the missing corpse went to? The, the missing corpse? According to the old man's testimony, there was only one other customer there. If that customer was the phony Glen Elg, then where did the killer hide the body of the real victim? Nog. I know where it is. The prosecution has a valid point, Mr. Wright. If your theory is to stand up to examination by the court, you must provide us with proof by answering the prosecution's question. Where did the killer hide the body? Y yes your honour. No conjecture, try it. let's hear some facts for once. Show the court a piece of evidence that proves where the body was hidden. E evidence? What's with the intense pressure in here all of a sudden? I thought I had him with that contradiction. But he's turned it all around and backed me into a corner instead. Well, Mr. Wright, the court will now hear the defense's theory and evidence. First, where was the body of the real Mr. Elg concealed? Inside Trapeon. It had would have have been too... Typo. It would have been too dangerous to take the body outside. Obviously, the body must have been hidden somewhere inside Trabeon. Hmm, interesting. But where could a body have been hidden inside a restaurant? 
Perhaps you would care to show the court on these plans, Mr. Wright? Yes, Your Honor. The exact location where the body was concealed and tied Trey Beon is... In the kitchen. The body was hidden here. Hmm, I see. Nice supposition. But the real question is, can you back it up? Where's the evidence that proves the body was hidden in that location? It's this. How did this get to the kitchen if the victim didn't go to the kitchen? Mr. Armstrong, do you recognize this bottle? None. None, none, none. I have never seen that ugly bottle before in my life. I only used the very best bottles, Monsieur. The highest quality only for me. Where was that bottle found, Mr. Wright? Interestingly enough, Your Honor, it was found in the kitchen of Trey Beyond. Eh? What? But I only ever use these bottles for my aromatherapy oils. But this bottle doesn't contain aromatherapy oil, Mr. Armstrong. No, it contains a medication. What kind of medication? I'm sure everyone remembers, don't they? The Mr. L visiting otolaryng <laughs> otolaryngological clinic. <laughs> otolaryngological clinic and was given medication that day. As far as <clears throat> you can't be serious. The defense had the contents of the bottle analyzed, and I have the lab results here. The contents of this bottle match the prescription that was given to Mr. Elg. Whoa. Glen Elg's murderer hid the body in the restaurant kitchen. At which time, this bottle fell out of the victim's pocket. Mr. Armstrong. When the incident occurred, didn't you say you were in the kitchen? M mind you! Yes, you know what I'm about to say. It was you who hid the victim's body. You did a fine job pretending to defend my client, Maggie Bird. However, you were setting her up to take the fall behind the pearl poor girl's back. Non! Order! Order! This is an extraordinary development. Witness, did you... Did you murder Mr. Glenelg? Never! I could not do such an horrible thing. No. <laughs> Why is his breakdown animation him drinking coffee while speaking? It just doesn't work. <laughs> Mr. Gotto? The bitterness. Every time I get lied to, I always down a mug of coffee. That's one of my rules. Do you have the slightest idea how many cups you've had by now? Then I like to do the same to the person who lied to me. I like to take them down with my empty cup. Listen up, chef. <laughs> chef. Chef. <laughs> oh, I'm being silly. How about a brand new flavor in your ear, my H-deficient friend? H-deficient? What? What? Je vous demande pardon. Please, you must hear me out. It is a trap. Listen to me. Por favor. Yo hablo espanol, Mr. Armstrong, and por favor is Spanish. I'm only going to ask you once. Did you do it? Non. Non, non. Absolutely non. I simply... I... Let's hear it. You've got one shot. Right, Gramps? Witness, the court will permit you the chance to make one final statement. If you lie under oath again, Mr. Gotto's coffee mug awaits you. As does my gavel. We, oui, tis clear. What, what, what do they always say in the movies? I've got a bad feeling about this. Very well, begin your final testimony, Mr. Armstrong. The Confession It is true, I id la body in the kitchen. A man forced me to do it, I had no choice. I had to go along with him because there was a reason why I could not refuse. 
But I did not kill him. I swear it. You must believe me. You were forced? By who? By whom, Judge? Whom? Uh, I cannot say, or I will be erased. Let's try a different question, then. When Mr. L died, was he really the only person at his table? There was... There was another man. There was another man. <laughs> I knew it. Maggie was telling the truth. You may cross-examine the witness now, Mr. Wright. There's just one more thing I need to do. I gotta break this guy and get him to tell us the name of the real killer. The confession. I think we probably know by now who the real killer is. <laughs> and what reason would that be, Mr. Armstrong? No, Monsieur. Yes? Surely you cannot expect a young maiden to... Maiden to... <laughs> what are they doing with this character? Let's talk about such an embarrassment. A maiden? You're a bit old to get away with that. <sighs> and a bit too male. <laughs> God's sake. I can't finish the cross-examination without establishing his reason. So I'll just have to prove it with evidence. Yeah, I know what the reason is. It's, uh... Here somewhere. It's this one. You have a half a million dollar debt, don't you? Half a million dollars? Is that true, Mr. Armstrong? Oui, je suis désolé. Désolé? I was weak and I borrowed the money. I can't, I can't read French. <laughs> this is Mr. Armstrong's Achilles heel. And that's why you couldn't refuse anything asked of you by this man. The tiger. A half million dollar loan from a black market loan shark. And you had no way of paying it back, did you? That's why you were forced to do anything this man told you. Oui, it is as you say. Mr. Armstrong. La Tiger. He told me he was going to use my restaurant for business rendezvous. On the day in question, he was meeting the victim to demand that he repay his loan. I don't know why it happened like that. I just did what he told me to do. I had no choice. I carried the body and let the in, inconscient, the inconscient Maggie out of the dining area and into the kitchen. After that, I just tried to forget what I had seen. I think we can now safely say that the man who forced your hand was Mr. Furio Tigre. Hmm, I do have one further question for you, Mr. Armstrong. The poison in the lottery ticket that were found in the defendant's apron pocket. Was that your doing as well? None, I knew nothing about that. Making it look like it was Maggie who had done it? I was, I was not. It is despicable. Das das what? I don't know. <laughs> Mr. Gotto. You will summon this Furio Tigre as a witness. I doubt that that can be arranged today, so I will adjourn for now. Proceedings will continue tomorrow. Thirty minutes. What? The trial will go on. I'll see to it myself. I need half an hour to get that guy on the stand. Not a minute more. Uh, how the... Don't sit back and relax yet, Trite. No one knows if that chef is really telling the truth or not. This trial could still go either way. Very well. Your request is granted, Mr. Gotto. We will resume once Mr. Tigre is ready to take the stand. Until then, court is adjourned for a 30 minute recess. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Except for the parts that made me uncomfortable. Um, cause yeah, wow, that was real bad. Um, but apart from that, you know, we've 
mostly solved the case at this point. Uh, next time, we have to actually pin it on the tiger. Get ready. But that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed. Bye!